It's been a long time coming, but finally it's time to start working on the Rover. We've been a bit preoccupied with driving other people's cars and buying some other project cars, but I was so keen to get going on the 600, I've done a few little bits off camera, which I'll tell you about very quickly. For a start, the indicator is no longer hanging off. The car is not looking quite so dilapidated. Now, sadly, I wasn't able to fix the repeater that was on there. The little clips that hold the repeater into the wing were completely broken. Long and the short of it, it was far easier to buy a good user replacement off a lovely chap on a Rover 600 Facebook page, swap the bulb holder over, and Bob's your uncle. It now looks great. It's a similar story with something I didn't even notice when I first got the car. The new side rear light had taken a whack at some point, had a big crack in it, and it was full of water. Thankfully, the same light lovely bloke off the same Rover 600 Facebook page sold me a mint condition rear light which was only three nuts and a swap of a bulb holder away from being fitted. Now the observant amongst you will note that the new tail light is of the tinted variety whereas the original one on the right hand side isn't. The new light still looks an awful lot better than the old one and crucially it doesn't leak so it'll do. Let's get on and do some stuff to the Rover today starting with this and this. Before we get started, courtesy of our friends at Teng Tools, you can win this 44 piece half inch socket set worth over £370. Entries close on the 31st of August, so click the link in the description to enter and good luck. I've covered before that the driver's power mirror does technically power fold, but the wrong way. And I think I know why. Someone who doesn't know that these are power folding mirrors has wrenched it around by hand and in doing so, broken the stop inside that stops it from going all the way around and doing that. It's happened on the passenger side as well and it means that when you're accelerating, braking or driving into the wind, the mirrors don't even stay straight. They flap around and makes them really difficult to use. The other issue is with the window on the driver's door. You can technically put it down, but if you put it back up again, you need someone on the outside of the door as well, pushing against it to keep it on its track and stop it from popping out. This is fairly common with Honda Accords and Rover 600s, which are of course the same car. Thankfully I've got a pair of replacement mirrors and a replacement window regulator to hopefully rectify both of these issues. And to help me I do have to give a big shout out to Mr John Batchelor who used to work at Rover back in the day and actually donated the Rover 600 Haynes manual to the project. So John thank you very much. To do the mirror and the window we've actually got to take the door card off and that looks to be at least fairly simple. So here is our lovely Rover 600 door card and there are a couple of things to do to get it off. There's a screw inside the door handle that needs undoing, then remove the handle, swivel this brown clip to unlatch the door release cable and slide it upwards out of the handle. There's a screw here in the armrest and another one under here. Then we need to take this screw off the back, pop that plastic clip off the front, and then we need to get a trim tool behind this door card to actually lever it away from the door frame. There. Well, that's one way of doing it. The other thing you need to do when the door card comes away is the wiring for the power central locking, which is on both sides, just a big plug there, just unplug that. And there's also the loom for, on the driver's side, the power mirror control. Again, just this big gray plug, undo it, and then the door card simply lifts away. Right, let's start with our mirror. Now, first things first, we need to get this little plastic panel off, which once the door card's out of the way, is just a prize off job. Away she comes, lovely. And you reveal the three bolts, Philip's head, that hold the mirror in place. Right, so we've cracked all three bolts, they're now loose. Before we actually go about undoing the mirror, it's well worth unplugging it, because otherwise the bolts will come out and all the weight will just be hanging on the wiring. So just unplug you and you, there we go. Then we can undo these bolts completely and the mirror will be released. Now these bolts aren't looking too healthy, they're a bit rusty and cruddy, but thankfully, the guy who sold me the replacement mirrors very kindly included some much better condition ones. So I think we'll be using his screws because these ones, yeah, they might well have come off the Titanic. And there she goes. Just be careful of snagging the loom on the door. And that is one utterly knackered Rover 600 mirror. The observant amongst you might notice that the new mirror isn't the same Charleston green as the car. The original plan was to aerosol the new mirrors the right colour, but local paint shops had a minimum two week lead time on the paint and buying it online meant paying 20 quid for 400 millilitres, which smacks of a rip off. So plan B is to gently lever the mirror casings off with a screwdriver, slotting it into the gaps and prizing the casings off. Our existing mirror caps are far from perfect, but they do still look 
look better on the car than the grey and white replacements. The original backs simply clip into place and will do the job for now. The new mirrors then slot onto the doors, feeding the wiring through first before bolting the mirror into place. The new mirrors retain the power adjustment, but they fold manually. It turns out that working power folding 600 mirrors are hen's teeth these days, and not only are these mirrors well sprung and rigid, but ditching the power folding means there's one less thing to go wrong. With two colour coded and tight mirrors now fitted, I'm calling that a win. Now then, let's get on to sorting that broken driver's window. So the first thing the Haynes manual says to do is to wind the window down enough that you can see it through this hole in the door skin. So just turn the ignition on, let's do this very slowly. And there you go. So this that you can see here is the bolt for the guide that holds the actual glass into the regulator. And what we need to do is undo that bolt or loosen it so that we can then tease the glass out of the guide. There's also this bolt to hold on the guide which is at the front of the door, but that one is gonna be a bit of a spanner job, I think. Right, I'm holding this very carefully because I've undone one of the bolts completely. The front one is now only finger tight and when that comes out, the glass can drop. Okay, so now those two bolts are out of the guide, the glass can actually be teased out like that. There we go. Next, take the speaker out. Four Phillips head screws, nothing more complicated than that. Just don't lose the screws. Next, the window rubbers are peeled off the tracks and moved out of the door frame. You'll notice that they're caked in various greases, which suggests that someone else has already tried to rectify the window issue. Just not very well. Then the bolts holding the regulator in are all undone, and the regulator can be folded up and teased out of a hole in the door. Oh, and don't forget to unplug the wiring to the motor. So here is the old window rig and you can see it was very rusty and very greasy and it was probably not long for this world in any sense of the word. Thankfully our new one, or second hand one, but working one, is in much, much better nick. The only thing we do need to do is change the motors over because the motor on the new one has got the two wire plug and the motor on the old one is a four wire plug. This was the start of things going wrong. After swapping the motors and greasing the new regulator, I slotted it into the door and bolted it on. However, fitting the rubbers proved quite difficult and I couldn't make the glass line up with the holes in the guide despite an hour of struggle. And then I worked out why. Initially, the old and new regulators are the same, but look closer and you'll notice that the mounting bolt holes are on opposite sides. That's right, I'd been sent a passenger side regulator by mistake. With light fading and rain in the forecast, it's action stations to get a window back in the rover. I wire brush back all the rust on the original regulator, clean off the dirt and grease before spraying white grease liberally into all the joints and the sliders. I swap the motors back over, bolt the old reg into the door and reattach the glass. Is it possible that a good clean and re-grease had done the job? It only works. The next day, the regulator bolts are torqued up and the door card reattached. And with that, we're done. These simple, cheap fixes prove how easily cars of this era often can be tidied up. In some cases, you don't even need new parts just to freshen up and maintain your existing ones. Stay tuned to see Jeff and I take our 90s rep cars on a very appropriate road trip. See you then.